It is Sunday morning and I just released a new video. I'm making this thing right here, which is yet another table saw fence, but this one is special <laughs> in that it locks on the back as well. You see here is the thing for locking on the back and um, it's very similar to the other one which was working just fine. I just did this because, well, people asked for it, first of all, and I thought it was an interesting challenge to try to get this thing to work. Um, the challenge being it ha making it self-squaring like the other one. As, so, you know, it locks, it, it tries to lock on the front rail first before it locks at the back. That's the idea there. And, um, you know, uh, it's a like it's a project that I've been meaning to do for a while. So like when I built the original, like I built table saw fences that work similar to this before, but they have a cam, um, a, a clamp handle, you know, the just the thing sticking out with a threaded rod attached and you tighten it up. Right. So it, it you know, it locks on the on the body of the or the top. Right. But this one works differently in that it's it. When you start tightening it, it tightens on that fence rail on the front first, so it self squares. And then as you go further down, it actually pulls this in tight against the back. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit, I can't say it's finicky because it's not. What you have to do when you're setting it up is have this T pushed up tight against the fence on the ends, like the back side of the fence rail. You know, the fence rail that goes across the front of the saw and then this thing up tight against the back of the saw before you make your adjustments so that when you when you are tightening this it pushes these plates which are kind of free to move move these t plates up tight against that rail first and then it starts pulling the the, the fence back and um, yeah I got new plans for it and they're part of a big bundle, a, a nine plan bundle that you can get for a limited time for 70% off. For just the next week, click the link in the description to access this bundle, which includes the plans for this project, as well as plans for my woodworker's workbench, deck chair, patio table, large toolbox, miter saw station, drill press cabinet, woodworker's toolbox, and the strock clamp. If you're looking for some practical projects to build in your workshop, this is a great opportunity to get my most popular ones at a huge discount. While this offer is still available, simply click the link in the description to access this nine plan bundle for 70% off. And as always, thank you for your support. So I started building this on Monday morning, I'm pretty sure. And the very first thing I did was I started the table saw to make cut and the switch. The switch on the table saw broke and no go. I already checked to make sure it wasn't the motor, like the start capacitor on the motor is when you keep the blade spinning and you press a button, nothing. So it's the switch. And um, I just yesterday, as a matter of fact, I was out here cleaning up, getting ready for this morning and Retighten this screw. Well, I took it out, cleaned it up, put the glue back on. It was starting to uh, like on screw, and this thing was starting to flop. I did that yesterday, last thing I did. And now this morning, like I said, it's already running, but then it stopped. Anyway, I gotta unplug the saw so that I can. I think I have another one of these switches. I'm gonna look for that too. I do have another one of these switches, but I already used it on my new band saw. I'm going to have to temporarily put this thing in just so I can get this working. Actually, it'll be a troubleshooting thing too, to uh, make sure it is actually a switch. I, I bought these switches, I don't know, quite a while ago. And um, I've used the saw a lot, obviously. And I'm pretty sure, okay, this was on the previous version of this saw too. And okay, I'm going to take out the side panel as well. <sighs> That's the way it goes. You. Uh, Carefully prepare to do something and get set up, <laughs> expecting that you can burn through what I need to get done. I need to get this done over this weekend because I, you know, I need to get the uh, 
the video edited and I got to get the plans finished. I mean, the plans are finished, but they're not finished until I build the thing and make sure that there aren't any mistakes. Right? So it's always something to throw a wrench into the works. I know. Yeah, I got it tough, right? If this is the, you know, my biggest problem right now. So wires coming in and that came undone and see, yeah, the, um, I also need a wire nut here to join one of these. Um, I gotta have a closer look at the switch. I got two wires. Okay. One of these goes out to the vacuum. I think it's this one right here. And this one, line and load. Okay. So these are the two that are getting switched and I'll just chop those back here and then these will be switched barely long enough. It's like, uh, anyway, I should have left a little bit more in here. I can always move this box back a little bit if I have to. I apologize for the sound. I'm not doing this fancy or anything. It's the camera microphone. All the way. And then I get this put on here and the right screwdriver. All this is temporary. So that means that it'll probably be like this for months. <laughs> Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just put that right there instead of messing around. I walk past and I turn on the table saw. That's not a big deal. What could possibly be wrong with that? <laughs> I think I got a switch plate with the guard on it. With the bars that I that was using it on the table saw, uh, on the old band saw. Take those things out and I'll put wood screws in. And I'll just wrap some tape around this. That's not electrical tape! You're gonna burn your shop down! <laughs> right. Of course I am. Now, the tape is just so that I don't accidentally touch it and give myself a little shock. Right? Um, it doesn't have to be electrical tape to do that. It just needs to be an insulator, which uh, paper is. That's enough of that nonsense. Let's get some screws. I'll use two of these from here. This is pretty long though. Uh, it reaches to the hole. So I can use the hole. I can use the old hole. And I did find the, uh, the plate with the guards on it. So extra safety. I do want to try this though before I go any further to make sure to make sure that it is actually the switch. You know? So I'll tighten this screw. I'll go over and I'll plug it in and I'll see. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. This is what they say, get her done. <laughs> get her done. That's all you need to do. And see, I'm not even going in a hole here. So this, this screw is just for show. Look at that. I'm using my left hand to drive the screws. I'm amazing. <sighs> amazing. Oh, God. There we go. Now we'll take our, our ultra safety plate. See, that has that bar. That's why I have to reach in there. I can't accidentally turn it on by walking past. That'll make everybody happy. Don't you feel better? I know you do. I know you do. Okay. Yeah. These this switch wasn't um, wasn't real high quality. Well, something popped. I don't know what that was. As long as it still works. Okay, so yeah, fixed. I'm ready to go. I quickly recorded that footage that you saw there because I already had the camera set up ready to go, and uh, yeah, a little quick repair and it's it's temporary. It's supposed to be temporary. But it's still there today, <laughs> and I'm probably there next month. You're not anybody in America unless you're on TV. On TV is where we learn about who we really are. Because what's the point of doing anything worthwhile if nobody's watching? And if people are watching, it makes you a better person. <laughs>